Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I just wanted to share with you real quickly how I made these little vellum shaker. This one's a mason jar and a heart. How cute. Aren't those cute? Anywho, so what you're going to need for this project is um, some vellum paper. You're going to need some sort of thread and a needle. Um, and some sequins, and I'm going to be using this painter's painter marker situation. Um, also, obviously, you're going to need some vellum paper. I picked this pe like the this kind um, up at the Hobby Lobby, and um, I wanted the little squigglies to be able to come through. Um, so that's why I picked up the design one. You could totally use just like regular plain vellum paper um, if you wanted to. Um, I just chose the squigglies because I liked it. Um, and then, of course, you're going to need some sequins. Now, I fussy cut and hand cut every um, little heart piece because I do not have like a Cricut or a die cut machine. Um, so what I had done was, is I had bought this set of um, cookie cutters at Walmart. And, I, you know, you get all these little cookie cutters. And I used this one to use as a trace um, so that I could get the, a perfect heart-shaped thing. But if you have a punch, you could totally punch them hearts out. Um, it'd save you time if you had the punch. Um, I just don't have a punch, so I did not use it as a punch. Um, I can't hand cut them all. Um, the next thing I did was, is I printed off this cute little mason jar. I attached it to some cardstock, and then I hand traced and cut out this shape of a mason jar. Um, and then I'll show you how um, later we get this to look like a mason jar there. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and get started. What I found um, was the easiest way to do this is I took, and you can see here along the edge, like I, you can see the ink pen that I used um, because I did hand cut them. But what I discovered was is like, um, it, it really doesn't matter. I'm going to go back through and trim these up. Uh, and then that you won't be able to see that black piece by the time I paint them and whatnot. So I didn't take too much time making sure that my hearts and my mason jars were like perfect so that they matched up evenly. Because I'm going to go back in and fix that um, later. So what you're going to do is I took a pretty long piece here of... Um, my thread and you can use any color I just chose to use this pink color and you're gonna you know string it and then at the end of it you're going to tie a little knot in it because um, you don't want it to go through and then you're going to take two little pieces of your vellum hearts and I make sure that the point is together and that's where I start my piece that's where I start my thread so, um, if you're not used to, or you can run this through a sewing machine if you had one. I just don't have one, um, and even if I did have one, I wouldn't know how to work it. So, um, hand stitching is the only way I know. And then you're just going to start hand stitching around it, just like that. Pull it all the way through. Um, I tend to... Um, and if you're not familiar with a needle, I strongly suggest um, using a thimble so you don't get your fingers poked. I've been sewing on buttons my whole life, so that part is not bothersome to me. So you're just, you see how I have it? You're just going to go back and forth around the edge. Just like so. <clears throat> and weaving in and out. I'm 
I tried to make it as an inline as I possibly can here. Because once you put the needle through there, I mean, if it's crooked or it's too far in or something like that, you're not going to be able to, I mean, you can, you'll just leave a little hole there, obviously, you know, because you're punching in. I'm just going to go around. I'm probably going to speed up this video um, through all this weaving process because the next part you're going to, I mean, once you get the hang of getting that needle, the vellum is not so thick that you have to push real hard to get the needle to go through. Um, of course, you don't want to use like a really tiny itty bitty needle, of course, you know, because then it it will take some time to get it to go all the way through. And I'm just going around and around. And I like my, my stitches to be fairly close together, but you can... Most definitely, I'm going to be putting um, some sequins and some seed beads in mine. Um, and so that's the reason why I want my mine to be so close together. Um, but if you're going to put like paper or something a little bit bigger inside there, then, you know, you don't necessarily have to um, make your little threads to be so small like I'm doing mine and then around the top the pointed you know the middle of that heart I tend to make it pretty tight in there because if any little sequence or seed bead piece is going to escape I think it's probably going to do it there or at the very bottom so we're just going to keep going around and I usually leave, I stop like so, a couple more times here and then I'll show you what I'm talking about. Uh oh, knotted up, knotted up. Uh oh, now we've done it. Okay. I got a little. When your hand sewing, this sometimes happens right here where you get a little bound up, and you just gotta get it through there just like that and just keep going. If your string is all. I'm working with a fairly long string because I'm going to be doing several of these. But if you're only going to be doing like one or two, you know, the shorter the length of your thread is, the easier it is to work with. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop it right here. And I'm just going to lay that needle down just like that. And then this piece is open. You know, you want to give yourself plenty of room to work with. And I'm going to then go ahead and add my sequins and seed beads and things. You want to have a variety, or you don't have to necessarily have a variety. But I'm going to... I have a whole box sitting over here to the side of me that has all of my sequins and stuff in it. And I'm just going to kind of hold that on there. And then I'm going to choose like this, can you see that, these seed beads right here and I'm just going to pour them in there and then I think I'm going to add this little bit of sequins I got in here in this little pouch because it's sitting over here and I know it's just going to get spilt if I don't. So I'm adding that in there. And then 
I'm going to continue around this and get it closed up. I just think these things right here are just so stinking cute. And I seen this was kind of inspired by the Target Dollar Spot. They have these little shaker hearts that they were selling in the Target Dollar Spot. And whenever I was down there, I was at Target a few weeks ago and they were there and I just kept looking at them and um at the bottom here I will overlap this last hole right there. Um, but whenever I was down at the dollar or at the Target and I was looking at these little um, hearts that these little shakers that they had, I'm just like, I could totally make those. And I don't know about you guys, but I just like stuff that's handmade. You know, I mean, all that Target stuff is awesome. You know what I mean? Um, and then all you're going to do is tie off your back. All And I usually tie about two or three times just to make sure that I have a good strong hold on the knot down here. Um, all that stuff at the Target Dollar Spot is all really cute stuff. It's just... I, I, I like to make stuff handmade. You know what I'm saying? Um, I don't know. I, I prefer it when somebody sends me something that it's not just all. I mean, I don't mind adding things that are store-bought and such. But I really enjoy somebody taking the time to hand make me something. And I enjoy taking the time. So you see how I've knotted that? <clears throat> And then all you're going to do is take your scissor and cut it off. I um, really enjoy it when people take the time to hand make stuff. And I'm just going to trim these little back pieces off like so. Okay. And then you have this shaker. Just like that. Now your shaker piece is all ready to go. Just like that. So now the next step that I try to do... I'm going to move my chair just a little bit. The next step that I try to do is I will go around and just trim up some of this. If it's not quite even in some spots, and it's usually down here in the um, little heart and around the edges like this because I didn't take a ton of time when I fussy cut my hearts out I didn't take like a drastic amount of time making sure that they were cut perfect um, but again I don't have a punch but it would definitely make it a little bit easier if you had a punch because they're all going to be uniform and the same or you know cut it out off your die cut machine or whatever Okay, so then there that is. I trimmed that up and actually missed a spot down here. And so there you have that. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I am just going to go around the outside edge with my silver marker. Now you could do that, and that just makes it look a little stand out just a little bit more and um, I think just puts a little extra pop on it
and this this kind of paint marker I bought this one at Walmart it's the only one I have but I absolutely adore it I use it on a lot of projects and the paint itself dries pretty quickly so I like that too and then there you go see how simple and cute that was and it didn't take hardly any time to um, you know put it together so there that one is and next up I'm going to um, do the mason jar okay so the same thing applies with the mason jar you just want to I'm going back here in advance and I'm pre um, tying the knot in the bottom of my string so when I go to start sewing it I don't have to worry about that just like that now I'm going to set that to the side real briefly and again I have fussy cutted these mason jars out already and I am just going to on these I'm gonna start at the bottom I believe when it comes to sewing and so I am just going to start the same process applies you're just gonna start sewing around it there I did my first prototype um, of this mason jar and I had I cut out a vellum piece and then I because I didn't know if I'd be able to get it to look like an actual mason jar and so I cut out one vellum piece and I um, started doodling with it and drawing on it and stuff so I wanted to make sure that you know before I showed you guys how to put these things together that it would actually kind of you know look a little bit like a mason jar so I kind of when I did the prototype to this one I did it a little bit backwards so I'm just gonna keep I'm probably gonna fast forward this video again until I get this sewn all the way around because I mean there's nothing really for me to tell you other than you just you know keep going back and forth and sewing you could probably even use like embroidery th thread if you wanted to um, I, I just don't usually buy embroidery thread so I don't usually have that on hand you know You turn it around trying to make the corners a little bit tighter up here at the like, little this little edge I'm trying to make it a little bit tighter just so nothing can escape and once you get this done if you find that something does escape and you have like a um, bigger distance between here and something's gonna escape on you just go back through and just stitch it up a little bit more right in that same spot um, it's not gonna affect anything it's still gonna look like it's hand stitched and like I said you could totally hand stitch these if you want to I mean stitch them on the sewing machine although I mean it's a pretty small piece of you know material here I don't know how easy or how hard that is on a sewing machine I don't I don't know how to use a sewing machine nor do I own one um, 
Um, so I don't know how difficult that would be to stitch it on the sewing machine. But hand sewing or little, you know, looking like it's sewing is fairly easy for me. I'm sure I could figure out how to sew. Okay, so I'm going to stop it right there and then I'm going to add some more sequins in here. And I oh, I want to put glitter in them, but I feel like the glitter is going to fall out. So I'm not going to. Every time I try to use glitter, it usually ends up seeping through seeping through the little gaps and things. So we'll use glitter on a different project. And this one here is just a mixture of pinks pinks and brighter pinks and then I feel like I should put some of these bigger seed beads in can you see those I'm gonna put some of those in there now you don't want to make it so fat that um, it won't shake on you obviously so just use your judgment on that like this one I can feel is a little bit more tighter than the other ones. But, oops, a bead is escaping. Runaway bead. And then you're just going back through here and just sealing it up. My 14 year old right now currently is in the kitchen, well not the kitchen, but the dining room and he's sitting at the table doing his homework. I don't know when the last time that's happened. And I can hear him from in here moaning and groaning. I'm not sure what he's working on, it's his history book, I know that for certain. Look at this, I got another, get on camera and you're like trying to use a weird angle. I'm having a hard time not getting my thread here in knots. I don't know what that's about. And a heavier weighted thread probably wouldn't do this. This this thread right here is pretty thin. Um, they do make heavier weighted thread out there. But this is what I had on hand, so this is what I'm using. And I'm also trying to rush because I feel like, I mean, who wants to watch somebody sew around this little piece for 20 minutes, you know? But I guess if you didn't, you wouldn't be watching this video, so there you go. Okay, so now I'm just going to again tie this off if I can. Sorry if I'm not on camera when I do this, but when the angle is funny, I'm like sitting in my chair funny and I am like trying to get this tied off and it's a small enough piece, so you know. Okay, so we're just going to cut that off at the end. And, you know, whoever receives these, you know, can end up taking that apart if they want to to get the sequence out to use it. So that's what that looks like there. And I'm, again, just going to be going through here and doing a little trim up job. Get it a little bit more precise. I 
I am thinking about going and purchasing me a die cut machine. Um, we are going to be going down to my husband's family lives in Kansas City and we are going to be going down there um, towards the end of March and I'm pretty excited about that because they have not one Michaels down there but they have like three or four Michaels down there they have like six Tuesday mornings down there and don't think that I won't be going in while they're going over to Bass Pro in that I'm going over to my my crafty stores so now I want to try and get that lid to look like this one so what I am going to do I just freehand it um, and pray that it turns out okay. I know that sounds silly, but it's the truth. So I start by drawing just a little line across here. And then I'm kind of just going to go like that. And I'm just going to color that part in. Kind of give it that little lip filling. And then I'm just going to make a little line up there. And then I'm going to color this top up here a little bit thicker. And then I'm kind of just going to make these lines. Like so. And there you have it. Actually, that's not there you have it. I'm going to go back around and do the edges like I did on the first one. Just because I like that it makes it look a little bit more put together. Just like that and then you you know they can use them as embellishments or they can use them you see how the difference in the filling is on this one this one's packed way more than this one and you know what I'm going to do is in this little corner over here I think I will just make a little heart freehand a little heart and put it over there and maybe another one over here of course, you don't necessarily have to do that, but I think it looks a little bit cute. And then, you know, like I said, they can use it as an embellishment on something, um, or they can totally um, take that sequence out of, out of there and use it in, as a shaker. I usually look at these and then you know I say okay I'm not messing with it anymore and then I end up fiddling with it some more and that will probably go on until I get them all done I'm probably gonna do about six of each of them but yeah guys that does it um, there they all are you probably can see them better if I just put them over like this probably There you go. Um, all right, guys, that does it for this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. Um, until the next time, guys, I'll see ya.